Hey everyone, I wanted to put together a tutorial for ChatGPT itself. This has become more and more of a question that I've gotten from people in terms of how do I get started and how do I use this? So with that in mind, today's video is going to cover the very, very basics. If you've already been using GPT on the daily, this is probably not going to be that advantageous to you, but we're going to talk about context, what it means, how GPT pulls from other conversations and essentially how the conversations formulate. We're going to be talking about the image generation and the different modes of chat GPT like search and deep seek. But the first thing, and I think the most important thing to think about is context. Now with GPT, you have the ability to customize GPT as you're seeing on the screen here. You can tell it what your name is. You can tell it how it should react to you and you can be very creative actually. There are some instructions that you cannot alter that are behind the scenes, but this gives you the ability to change how GPT reacts to you specifically. It'll change the entire context of your conversations, and in a moment, you'll see why that's so important. You can tailor it to be more serious, more cynical, sarcastic, funny, witty. You get the picture. Altering this basic context is going to drastically change how the output looks and feels. But if you're looking at the response example on the screen and asking why it involved the word coop, I'm going to show you that in a minute, too. As we explore the other settings that are available to us in GPT, you'll notice that we have some other options. When we look into personalization, by default, we have boxes checked that are going to allow GPT to pull context from other conversations that we've already had. So if we've been talking to GPT in this context about chicken coops, it's going to use every bit of context in its delivery. In here, you'll also see another feature called memory, where in different chats, different pieces of the conversation will get stored in a separate memory file. And over time, the idea is GPT learns more and more about you so it can give much more relevant answers. Knowing where this is and keeping it clean, in all honesty, will help your conversations become a lot more relevant. So definitely something worth looking into if you have been using GPT for a minute. I had deleted all my chats and cleared my memory about a week ago because that's something I've been going through myself. I've been trying to raise chickens and learning all about it through GPT. Right now, we're using the chat GPT 4.0 model, which is probably the most common, the most conversational, and it's also the one that can generate images. So along with being able to type directly in there, ask direct questions, you can ask it to generate images of things you'd like to see. Quick note about deleting all your chats, by the way. If you do that and you've had images generated in chats in the past, you're not going to have access to them moving forward. While that might be changed soon, it was something that caught me by surprise and I lost quite a few images. To ask GPT to generate images, it's very simple. It's very conversational. You just simply ask. You have to be careful about implying it. And if you just ask it directly, generate an image. Again, the GPT-4.0 model is the one that's capable of doing that. And it shouldn't give you any problems. One of the newer convenient features that OpenAI just recently added is this button that says library, which will show you all of the images that you've generated across multiple chats. And again, if you deleted chats like I did, you might lose a few. But hopefully they fix that in the future. Covering a few basics here with the interface, you can see how easy it is to rename chats to help keep them organized. We're going to cover projects and custom GPTs in a different tutorial, but for now, let's look at the basic interface controls. If you prefer voice to typing, this button here will allow you to just dictate using your microphone. You can speak directly to it, and it uses OpenAI's Whisper model to translate what you said into text, making it very easy to have a text conversation using your voice. You do have to hit enter each time, so there are additional steps to just having a conversation. But the option to have a conversation also exists. While OpenAI's voice model, in my opinion, isn't their strongest model, it's probably the one that I find the most conversational and the easiest to just get quick information from. Hey there, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's up? I'm here to talk about chickens. Perfect. Chickens are always a great topic. What's on your mind? Are we talking feed, behavior, or maybe some chicken gossip? Give me some chicken gossip. Let's hear what that sounds like. All right, let's dive into the hen house drama. So, word on the roost is that Cluck Norris has been strutting around like she owns the place, while Yoko Ono is busy clucking out her latest egg-laying ballad. Meanwhile, Peep and Pip are plotting a jailbreak from the brooder, and there's a rumor that the black chick is the mastermind behind the whole operation. It's like a feathery soap opera in there. Anything in particular you're curious about? Now, listening to this conversation might have been confusing or surprising, but if you take a look at the memory feature again, everything we heard came from the context of past conversations. 
Memory can be one of those features that you let fall by the wayside and let it manage itself, but you can also personally choose to direct it by telling GPT specific things to remember about you. If you decide, for example, that you want to use GPT for recipes and you need it to know things that you're allergic to, you could have it specifically memorize that. When memory gets used, whether you asked it to or not, you'll see an icon or an indicator there that you can use to manage your memory or take a look at what got remembered. Now, normally you might use Google to search for things, but you can actually use GPT in a different way to search for things. And again, using the context that we've talked about. Now, I programmed into the memory that I live in Tampa. So when I search for local tractor supply, it's going to specifically look in the Tampa area, just as if it did a location. The only difference here is that I've clicked the search button, and instead of a conversation, I get search results powered by GPT. Deep research is a crazy option, and I'll warn you that this takes a very long time to get results, but it produces some extreme results. It's almost like asking it to do a complete report on whatever it is you ask. In this case, let's look up what diseases chickens can get, you know, if I'm raising backyard chickens for the first time. Why not? Deep research sometimes will ask a few clarifying questions first, and then basically creates a massive project for itself, and behind the scenes will just start doing a lot of these searches and things like that, allowing you to continue doing whatever you want within the GPT program. You can create a new chat, create new images. If you were to stare at it and follow along, you'll see each of the individual steps on the right-hand side of the critical thinking type exercises that it's trying to perform. You can see here this took a total of 16 minutes, but generated basically a full, almost like a book report type of output on every single disease that could potentially affect a chicken. Now, is GPT 100% correct? Absolutely not. Is this maybe a good framework to operate off of? Absolutely. This is not something that you would want to submit to a university as a full research paper. But at the same time, it's something that gets you steered in the right direction. GPT, to create this, performed 80 separate searches and did a bunch of work behind the scenes. And that is essentially what deep research is and does. Now, the odds that you need this much data or this much accuracy isn't really common. So there's other models that we can consider. 4.0 is what we've talked about. It's the most common model right now, and it's the most conversational. But as long as you're paying the $20 a month and you have plus access to GPT, you have access to O3, which is a better reasoning model. For the purpose of this video, I put together one question for both 4.0 and O3 so you can see what the difference looks like. We're just asking about common egg-laying chickens to see the difference in the output. You'll notice with models like O3, you don't get an immediate result. It takes time to think. Now, as far as what's actually being processed on the other side, just assume there's a lot more technology being used here. Similar to deep research, you can click on the word thinking. It would break down exactly the process and steps that it's going through. But none of that really matters to you when what you're looking for is the output. I renamed these two chats with the 4.0 and the O3 models that were used, and you can see what the difference is. The O3 results just simply seem a lot more detailed. You can see it included a table with pictures, and the formatting is just better. One of the last things to discuss here is the little plus button, where you can actually just paste a picture right into the chat window here, or you can upload a photo. Either way, GPT can use your photo as context as well. So if you want to have it create a custom graphic, which I'm sure you've seen trending virally all around the internet, this is how you would go about doing it. You simply upload or paste any photo right into the chat. As long as you have Plus membership, you shouldn't have any problems creating an image. Now, you may come up against copyright restrictions if you ask for something that is copywritten. But if you ask for something in a general style, like anime, for example, it shouldn't have any problem giving you output. I think today's video covers just the very basics of what is understandably a very complex program. If you've had some difficulty with GPT, you're not alone. And there's been a lot of people who've asked me for tips and tricks and... Upcoming videos, we're going to talk about some really cool stuff. We're going to talk about projects and custom GPTs and all kinds of different stuff. So I appreciate you sticking around with me on this one. Stay tuned for more.